it's Master Kid here bringing you another Dragon Ball Z Dokkan battle video and so we got a data download on Global today to coincide with the release of the new quest stages. Uh, we have like a mini sort of quest update campaign which is interesting. I actually don't remember whether they did this on JP. I'm gonna assume that they did but it definitely is uh, cool. We get a few little extra bonuses, something to help you get on your way with uh, farming up the new trunks. So we're going to go through all of the details here. There's a few extra little bits in the data download. Nothing we didn't really know was coming already, but obviously just uh, a few useful things here for uh, getting you started on the way to uh, getting this trunks fully leveled up. And as I'm going to put in, you know, probably part of the title, we'll go through the best way to build the trunks uh, once you've farmed out all your copies. Talk about the uh, unit that he will, of course, eventually become, which... You know, it could be a good uh, four months from now if we go by the same timeline as JP. I was actually really hoping when we saw that there was like a quest special event thing for this, that maybe they were going to just be dropping like all of the stages in one go or something so that Global could kind of catch up with this unit. But we'll go through all the information here. So shout out to Proton as always for collecting all the data download info. It was only a small one, uh, nothing that we didn't really know about. So the Tech Trunks, who has arrived in the game, farmable from... The new quest mode, Area 32, uh, the card is farmed from Stage 3. So make sure you get those four new stages done. Uh, you get a bunch of um, stones just for beating them, obviously, and uh, you can farm up some green and blue gems. Just four straightforward stages. As far as I know, I'll have to double check. Uh, people can let me know in the comments. But as far as I know, none of these take over as being the new best link level stage. Um, but that's something I'll have to check. And if someone does... Uh, someone does provide the info i'll pin that comment uh, in the video so then we have uh, a couple of events the uh, guru guidance uh, event starting from uh, wednesday uh, well tomorrow basically after re well, after the next reset from when you're watching this video the uh, guru training thing will be back which is the extra chance to get the link level ups and then the daily roshi uh, turtle stage yeah, it gets the bonus thing we've had a couple of times now where you get a guaranteed launch appear as the boss of the stage which of course means that you get um the guaranteed like kai uh for finishing the stage as well so nice little extra bonus uh then we get the uh new limited attempts event unstoppable walking weapons of destruction this is the uh event where you fight the androids uh, on a daily it's, it says limited attempts it's a daily event right and it's where you can get skill orbs for the um, Android slash Cell Saga characters. So obviously make sure you get this done every day so you can get those uh, decent orbs. Um, should be a straightforward stage. We get the Support Memory Boost, which is the bonds forged in the past, which is this one, the uh, Trunks leaving and saying goodbye to Vegeta. As you can see, I think it was originally just a Vegeta family buff, which considering how you know badly that team needs some help which is probably not one of the best support memories right i'm just bringing it up here it's uh, it was just vegeta family attack and defense 10 percent for two turns once you level it up from the event it's vegeta family or bond of parent and child key plus one attack and defense 20 percent for three turns which now considering it's bond of parent and child which is one of the biggest and best like categories in the game this becomes a much much better support memory for those so for those of you struggling with you know some of the crazier end game events like the fusion zamasu who with the aoe's huge pain straight from turn one um bringing a team as strong as you know some of these bond of parent and child characters and then getting 20 percent attack and defense for three turns this is a very very good support memory for the difficult uh, dismal future red zone stages so definitely make sure go ahead and get that done uh, and then of course wednesday morning we have the release it's been in the news since we got the celebration info right for the new year celebration but we have the physical transforming super saiyan vegeta easy a uh, i'll be putting up the team building guide uh, later today for this as i always do for the extreme z battles i will of course be live uh, tomorrow morning well it's morning uk time right i think it's late evening depending where you are in the us but I will be live uh, doing the Easy 8 on stream, so hopefully I'll see you guys there. <clears throat> and then we have the details for the uh, Super Vegeta chain battle, one of the last few chain battles that will be coming. Uh, this doesn't come to Global until Monday. 
Uh, and then there's tickets in the files, obviously, because we're getting the uh, Extreme Z Awakening for the physical transforming Vegeta. Uh, there will be a banner for him as well. And then this just confirms I hadn't actually played it because I did all the missions. So I didn't even realize it actually was still in play. But the infinite attempts against Fusion Android 13 in the red zone was still up, but is now over. So unfortunately, if you haven't done those missions, uh, that's gone back to three attempts per day. I'm assuming the missions are still available, although I don't know if they had a... Um, like an end date on them but yeah they should be uh, if you haven't done those i don't know if you actually still can but the event is back to only three times a day so there you go that's everything in the data download most of which we knew about and then of course we get this quest dokon story i think it's because it was quest united campaign i saw this come up in the news and there was that little part of me that was just like please please tell me they've just dropped all the quest stages that we're missing on global and we can just get lr trunks and broly because as i said in the video um yesterday when it was announced for that this or the day before yesterday when we got the news update saying the new quest stages were coming each stage of the awakening for that character was uh, separated by two months on jp so we got the update that we've got now where you can farm the ssr trunks then it was two months later they added the update to get the medals to awaken them into the TUR Trunks and Broly. And then it was two months after that that we got the update to awaken them into the LR Trunks and Broly. So if we follow that exact same time frame on Global, it will be four months until we get LR Trunks and Broly. So we'll see. Maybe they'll drop them quicker. Maybe, you know, maybe we'll get the next big... I say big, but we'll get the next celebration on Global, which assumingly is going to be the Tournament of Power Androids. Maybe they'll drop another quest update with that. Who knows? Uh, that would obviously be good for the grand scheme of things for catching up with this unit as quickly as possible. But the United campaign, you should have this already unless you've just not logged into the game today yet. But you get five copies of the trunks straight away, as well as ten dragon stones. Um, there are a bunch of missions available as well. Uh, those will be things like opening his paths, getting his super attack up to level 10, all that kind of stuff. Um, which just give you a bunch of uh, gems and a few stones. So I would probably say... Uh, once you know you want to get onto farming the stage to get the extra cards I would probably uh, train one of the copies up to level 80 and awaken them into a UR put those four copies in to open the paths so you can get a bunch of the um, a bunch of the rewards straight away uh, you do get tech orbs for completing a bunch of those missions so you can uh, auto fill out those paths obviously it won't do the bomb right because it's only going to be super attack one but that'll get him up to a decent percentage and then what i did was just throw him on my link level team to then go and start beating those new quest stages so i can start getting his uh, links leveled up a little bit um, and then of course as you're farming the extra copies then you can just get him up to sa10 and then you'll have your one copy or your first copy because we'll obviously go fully into the strategy here uh, you'll have your first copy sa10 all paths open uh, ready to rainbow with the uh, details that we're going to go through um, here in the video we also get extra xp for a pretty long time uh, it's like the whole of january essentially for the uh, quest mode quadruple xp so if you're someone who even if you do link level a fair bit normally um, four times xp if you're not ranked 999 already this is going to be uh, quite helpful, especially if you are on the lower levels, uh, lower rankings still. You're potentially going to be able to get a lot of rank ups, which gives you a lot of free stamina. So that is obviously very, very good. So let's jump in to talk about the unit themselves. So this is the unit as he is now that we have on Global, the Tech Trunks, farmable from Stage 3 of Area 32. I mean, we can see by looking at his kit, he's not particularly exciting but that is of course because he is just you know a base ssr awakens into ur doesn't go any higher than level 100 so we wouldn't really be expecting anything crazy from him at this point right but as we have the unit in our possession now you want to get your first copy fully built up get him rainbowed and ready to go for the awakenings further down the line so i'm not going to show the details of the tur because again i mean some people you might want to throw them on your team just for a bit of a laugh check them out you know before we get the awakening to the lr but the important thing is what the unit awakens into because this is what you obviously want to plan um, his hidden potential around because this is the unit that they're going to eventually become so you want to have their hidden potential uh, as best as possible for this form of the character so they are an lr so they have two super attacks their 18 key super raises attack and defense for one turn does mega colossal damage and greatly lowers defense and their 12 key super raises a second defense for one turn and does mega colossal uh, just normal colossal damage so of course the thing you can note straight away is their 12 key super raises attack and defense for one turn which means additional supers for them is very very good 
Uh, now bear that in mind, we're going to talk about their passive. So they get key and stats at the start of the turn. They can change orbs to rainbow if they are in slot 1 or slot 3 at the start of the turn. This makes them quite interesting because if you float them off, for people who don't know this about rotations, if you float a unit off in slot 3, when they come back onto the turn 3 turns later, they're always in slot 1. So if you float these guys off on the turn they come back, they will be in slot 1, they'll create rainbow orbs. So that's something interesting to keep in mind. They get extra keeper rainbow orb as well as attack. Then they launch two additional attacks, each of which has a medium chance to become a super. Now this is something why well, I say to bear in mind with the, uh, hidden potential when it comes to additionals, because a unit that launches two additional attacks guaranteed, even if those are two normal attacks, that means that the game will check for an additional super from their hidden potential with each one of those attacks. So at a bare minimum, they will always be attacking three times in one turn. So the hidden potential for additional doesn't have to be super, super high because the way the hidden potential system works, as I say, is it checks for a, a hidden potential additional after each attack that the character does as part of their non-hidden potential like kit, right? So they'll do their first attack. The game will check for a additional from the hidden potential. Then they'll do their second one and the game checks for it. And then they'll do their third one and the game checks for it. If any one of those three checks was successful along that stage, then they will do a hidden potential additional. So let's say you give this unit full additional. You give them like 25 additional, right? That means they have a 50% chance to get an additional attack. What's often going to happen is that first attack they do it's going to roll to check it. I mean, we don't see any of this, obviously. It's all done on the back end, but it's going to roll to check it. It's going to succeed, and then it doesn't need to roll it for the other two because you can only get one additional from the hidden potential. So essentially, all of those extra, the two extra chances were just not needed. So I think giving them too much additional is bad because you're probably, you know, you have three chances to succeed on getting the additional. Now, the next part of their passive to take into account as well is they have a built-in high chance to perform a crit. So essentially, 50% chance to crit, that means they basically have the equivalent of 25 crit in the hidden potential. And they are a tech unit, which means they get a free level 5 crit anyway. So basically, they have a 50% chance, and then if that fails, the game will check for a 10% chance from the level 5 that they already have. And that's for each of the attacks, right? So you have a couple of chances that those could be crits. So with that in mind, I would say that you probably don't want to give them any extra crit in the hidden potential whatsoever, right? And then they get an additional attack and defense 40% when performing a super, additional attack and defense 31% and reduced damage received by 8% within the same turn per super attack performed. So if you get like the God RNG and they do four super attacks, not only do they get a bunch of extra attack and defense, but the four super attacks means they get 32% damage reduction. The problem, of course, is if you do one super attack and then two normals, they get 8% damage reduction and they only got the attack and defense buff once. So I think bearing that in mind with the two abilities that we've already talked about so far, um, I would definitely put their hidden potential as a mixture of additional and dodge. But as I've already said, I would not lean too heavily into uh, additional because you are able to get um, a bunch of extra, uh, you know, you get the three checks during the turn for the uh, hidden potential. And then bear in mind, they do also have their own unique skill orbs uh, that will be able to farm from one of the later stages. Um, they have ones that give them a ton of extra defense uh, per, it's like the unique ones that we got for the anniversary characters, right? Where they give you this much higher level of defense ability that you can't get from the normal skill orbs. Um, so you can use those to supplement the ability as well. But I would say from the base, you want to go for additional and then dodge. Funnily enough, I am, uh, I've been in the process of farming up the extra copies to do my second one. And I've just been looking at the hit potential for this guy um, as I'm building mine up now. So if you just go from the base without any skill orbs, you can get to 15 additional, uh, sorry, 15 dodge and then six additional. Um, which of course means every time they attack, the hidden potential chance is 12%. So I don't know if personally I would want it to be a little bit higher than that, but we'll uh, check out the unique skill orbs here. Okay, so I managed to find the uh, list on like a Japanese website. Shout out to Truth. Uh, he actually sent me the link in the group chat so I could find this. But um, these are the skill orbs that you can farm up from the later stages. So it seems like one of the best uh, bronze ones, you can get a level five attack and level five defense. That's pretty good. Um, and then there are 
some of the hidden potential ones. I mean, there is one that is level one crit, level two additional. So if you want to go in for that extra bit of additional, I do think the defense and attack one probably is best overall. But remember, you're going to be farming these from one of the later stages. So this is something that you are, um, you know, you're potentially going to have to do a lot of runs to get the one that you specifically want. But level five attack and level five defense is definitely good. Um, and then when we move down onto the silver ones, um, so you can see here, you can get dodge and attack. That's quite interesting, but you can get dodge and defense. You can get crit and defense. Can we get additional defense? You can. So level four additional level three defense or level four dodge and level three defense. So the skill orbs are going to let you, I would say actually it's probably best then at this point to potentially wait until you can actually farm the skill orbs, which I believe they are farmable once the TUR comes out. So you will be able to have this done um, before the LR Awakening is available. So it kind of depends on what you want to go for in terms of how much you want to farm, right? Because if you build your unit now um, as full, like a dodge and then a little bit of additional, you're probably then going to want to farm up the additional, um, you're going to want to farm the additional skill orbs to top up that additional a little bit because you've given them full dodge in the actual hidden potential system that they have like in the, you know, in the hidden potential tree. But then, of course, you could end up just constantly getting the dodge uh, skill orb drop. And then I guess the good thing is with a free to play unit, you can always get a couple of you can jump back into the stage, get a couple of extra copies and then reset the um, the hidden potential right? or reset one of the nodes. Right. If you keep put if you keep getting the dodge and defense skill orb and you think you've given them too much dodge, you can always reset one of those two additional and then put this skill orb on them. Um, they do, of course, have the additional and crit, which is three and four, depending on which way around you want to go. But, you know, like we've already said, I don't think extra crit is really necessary for them. I would much rather them have extra defense and then dodge or additional, depending on which one you're going for with the skill orbs. And then when it comes to gold, you can get a level five for both for uh, attack and defense, but you can get a level six dodge and level two defense or attack if that's how you want to go i think defense is probably still the best bet for them especially a lot of teams they are going to be a slot three floating unit you want them defensive capabilities to be as high as possible um <clears throat> and then of course the option for the additional and defense is there as well so level six that's pretty good so if you went all in on the skill orbs let's say you did go for the full additional build uh with the actual skill orbs themselves that gives you the ability to get 10 additional from the actual skill orbs themselves right so as i said just now on the actual skill tree itself as the unit is right now in game without the skill orbs being available if we went full dodge on our hidden potential tree and put the rest into additional the unit would have six additional and 15 dodge and then once we get the skill orbs if i farm and only go for the additional and defense for silver and gold that gives me an extra 10 that would put our final build at 16 additional five crit and 15 dodge i think that is what i'm going to go for the 16 additional means that each time they do one of their attacks they have a 32 percent chance to do an additional and considering they're always going to do a minimum of three attacks having a third chance three times like statistically on average you will get one of those three and that means they will do the hidden potential attack now obviously that could just be a normal Hopefully it'll be a super. And of course, RNG be RNG, right? We always know, you know, the 70% chance things don't happen. So even with 25 additional, there's the chance that they don't actually do additional attacks. But that is the build that I'm going to go for. So like I say, as of now, in game with what their thing looks like, it's going to be uh, six additional, five crit and 15 dodge. And then once we get the skill orbs, I will go for the bronze attack and defense, the silver additional and defense and the gold additional and defense. And that will put them up to 16 additional five crit and 15 dodge. So let me know what you guys think down below in the comment section. How are you planning to build your trunks and Broly? Have you done it already? Uh, let us know down below what build you went for. Have you already farmed up the extra copies? I did say actually about the strat, right? So you want to get your main copy, SA10, all four paths open, rainbow with the build that we just talked about, then farm up an extra copy to SA10. I've noticed so far, like, you know, without a boost or anything, I pretty much always have gotten a copy of the card drop each time. So even if it's not the best link level stage, there's the fact you're able to get some link levels. It's four times XP. You know, just playing the stage a bunch of times, especially when you're not ranked 999. It's just giving you extra XP and extra link levels. 
get that second copy up to SA-10, and then of course once they awaken into an LR, you can merge the two together, get them up to SA-20 straight away, and then of course we don't know yet because it has not happened on JP, but we assume that they're going to get an easy A at some point down the line, right? So if you wanted to farm up an extra SA-5 copy ready for when that happens, then of course you can go ahead and do that. But you know, like I say, there is no rush, right? We're, we're gonna be waiting for the LR to come out as it is anyway, but JP doesn't even have the EZA announced yet. So yeah, there you go. Let me know what you guys think. Have you farmed your copies up already? What is your build? Let us know down below in the comment section. And uh, yeah, hopefully Global gets the quest stages maybe a little bit quicker, but I guess we shall have to wait and see. So that is going to be it for the video, guys. This has been the Master Ningen. Smash that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. Check out the links down below for the Discord and the merch store. And I will see you all again soon. Have a good one.